So, uh, uh, welcome to Lincoln Shorts. This is Sean Roberts. I'm Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network. I have with me Larry Norton. Uh, you run the, Brett, uh, the election reform program at the Brennan Center. How, oh, how money could be spent locally um, still. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you want to talk some about that? Because it's obviously something with the appropriations call that you've been, you know, obviously putting yeah. a lot of effort into. Yeah, so we are, we are uh, less than 30 days away um, from uh, the last day of voting, right? Voting has already started. So I, I wouldn't even say election day because election day is now in a lot of places. Um, but we're, we're, we're less than 30 days away from the last day of voting. And um, there's still, uh, you know, there's still a possibility that Congress might provide additional funds to election officials. There's still a possibility that states may provide additional money to election officials. Sure. Um, some of the CARES uh, money still hasn't been spent in some states or made available to the um, local jurisdictions. The state is helping. Right, out right. There are some, like, for instance, I think some counties in Florida who haven't gotten their, their CARES money last I heard. Um, so, I mean, there has been a question about whether or not that, that additional money could even be used anymore. There's still a question about, you know, would it make any sense anymore to provide additional money to election officials? And, and there, are, there, is, there are still some things that money could be used for uh, in the closing weeks of the election um, that I think would be very beneficial. Um, for sure, I mean, it's sad to say, but there's still polling places where um, poll workers uh, could use additional PPE. Um, uh, and and other measures that to to make um, polling places healthier and safer for poll workers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, there's been a lot of talk about mail voting taking a long time to process. Um, that's mostly only true in a few states. Um, a number of states allow have have done mail voting for a long time, particularly out west, and they'll be they'll probably be fine this election. Right. Uh, but but states in the east, in particular, um, where they traditionally haven't had a lot of mail voting um, and don't have the infrastructure built up, um, it would be very beneficial for them to be able to hire up, uh, and they can still do that to a process more, more mail yeah. ballots. Sorry. A lot more hands to. Uh, a lot more hands to basically get, <laughs> to get to get through that. Right. There's a, there's a process that's involved. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me, why does it take long to count mail ballots? Um, it's not that it takes so long. It's that the process that you would normally do at a polling place where you check um, people's identity um, has to be done in some states only after the election is over with mail ballots, right? right. In the state of like Pennsylvania or Wisconsin, it's only at that point that they're going through the, the envelopes um, that people have sent their mail ballots in to check, to confirm my identity, to make sure that the person is registered, uh, that they haven't already voted. That takes time, um, and they have to do that for each ballot. Um, and the more people you have to do that, the faster that that process can go. Um, yep. And then potentially to count them, right? Right. Um, because a lot of jurisdictions, again, mostly in the East, don't have the machines that they need. And so it's just a slower process um, to count. If you have more people, uh, that, that would save a lot of time. So it's, that's another thing that could be used. Um, if there are having additional people at the polling places to deal with what's going to be a slightly different election this year. We, we talked earlier about, um, you know, people showing up at the polling place, maybe with their mail ballots. Uh, perhaps they, they have questions because they sent in their mail ballots and they're not sure Confusion. if they can or should be voting in person. Um, it would be nice to have extra people at the polling places that can direct them and that can help them. All of that costs money. So. Yeah, uh, there is um, something mentioned on the uh, preparations call as well, talking about that uh, security um, for um, some of the voting centers, um, not only where equipment's being housed, but perhaps um, where uh, some of the facilities that maybe have to be expanded unexpectedly, like in Pennsylvania, for example, mm -hmm. sticks out in my head, that they've, they've massively uh, expanded their uh, vote by mail. Um, and it, I think... I would just assume locality by locality, I'm sure some of the bigger ones have been on top of it. Maybe some of the smaller ones haven't been able to keep up quite as much uh, with the, the massive increase. So they, they possibly have some rented areas that normally they don't uh, 
use and perhaps they need security for that so that there's nobody going in and touching things or at, at the very least not being where uh, they shouldn't be or uh, people wanting to create um, uh, uh, chaos, I guess is the, the best word I can think of. So, um, so security, um, pull work, paying, pull work, uh, paying for security, paying for pull workers, um, PPE, um, but just like uh, food, drinks, you know, things like that, just basic stuff. You get a lot of people in a small space, there's gonna be a lot of hungry people. Um, so, uh, well, and, possibly- and, and if you hire more people with, with COVID and, and the need for social distancing, you hire more people, you're gonna need extra space just for that, right? So um, yep. you're not gonna be able to cram 100 people into a small space to process ballots. You're gonna have to get extra space and that costs money too. Yes. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, what do you think about um, assuming that most elections officials are on the ball and have already done, you know, all the, the groundwork that they've needed to do, but what do you think about some of this money possibly being spent on uh, marketing or, or uh, uh, digital campaigns to, to get Absolutely. out some, maybe some last minute information to people? Yeah, I, voter education this year is so critical because so many people are going to be voting for a new way, the first time, there a lot of people are going to be voting mail for, by mail for the first time. A lot of people that are going to vote in person are going to have different polling places than they previously had because COVID has forced uh, relocation of a lot of polling places. So, um, and you know, their election officials, I think, have campaigns uh, in a lot of these places already around these issues. But if they got some extra money, they could really ramp that up. So that's a, that's sure. definitely another area where money could be helpful. Expand it, and it's my understanding um, that the EAC grants. Um, the way that they're, they're worded in such a way that it allows a, a, certain, a great, a, a lot of flexibility is the yeah. right, right thing I was looking for, um, for uh, elections officials to be, be able to spend it on something like this that, you know, maybe they didn't consider when they're originally writing out the CARES Act. I, th I think that's right. The language is pretty broad as long as it's addressing um, election administration challenges related to COVID. They're okay, and I, I, I think I, it seems to me the plain language uh, reading of that um, would support using um, voter education because of challenges that were caused by COVID. All right, that makes sense. Probably uh, one of the more important things nowadays is getting good information to people in a timely way. Absolutely. Well, thank you for talking with me. This has been Lincoln Shorts. Mm -hmm.